welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy, and as you can see, there's no RJ. He's at work today. Um, he's been rodeoing Wednesday, Thursdays, Fridays. Oh my goodness, I look like this. Anyway, um, the it's a long story. I'll get into it here in a little bit. So we'll move right on into in the chapel. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Proverbs 16, 3. So just remember to do it God in your heart and you will be successful if it's his will okay because we all know if you got God in there and you're following his path and you're doing the right thing with the right people at the right time you know it'll all work out so um okay ah yeah the barn stalls the two puppies we've had a couple of issues with them nothing major just when you get backyard bred dogs um and around here, that's what we call oopses. Um, like you'll have a male and a female. The people never intended to, for them to breed, but it happened. So we call them backyard breeders. Um, we prefer to take backyard breeders, so we found one that had Burmese mountain dogs that had an oops with husky. They have the size, they should have the energy, and the Burmese mountain dog in them should have the farm um, influence in them. So. I'm not saying they're going to be perfect dogs, but we'll make them work. Um, but anyway, last week we gave them a pill, and they just pooped worms. Uh, not poop with it, just piles and piles of worms. It was so gross. Um, so once we got them wormed, we noticed they were itching a lot. And Carl actually has a couple of spots that he has itched really raw. But I called the vet. They're, they were only seven weeks old. So he says we're pushing it on the whole... Uh, medicating them for fleas and ticks because all that says eight weeks. They're, because they're wormy, they're not as big as they should be. He says if they were bigger, he might go with it. But we had been washing them with Dawn. He said not to do it more than once a week. And I was cheating and doing it about every five days because they were just so infested with fleas. It was horrible. Um, so they got a bath today. And then we've had them, um, I think Archie and I figured about two weeks. So... Um, we went ahead and we put on some flea stuff that you just put down their back. It is not strong. Um, we use it for moose and it doesn't kill all the fleas. So I know it's not super strong. But I also know it's going to give them some relief. Um, even if it doesn't kill all the fleas or whatever between it and the bath. So we gave them a bath today. So that that'll be on them for a good five days before I give them another bath. So, um, yeah. We're hoping that, that will get rid of the flea problem um let's see what else mr mcquack is in the bathroom he's still doing great i take him out every once in a while but now he's getting where he can run away from me so it takes two to catch him um this pig miss charlotte escaped earlier this week um i don't know she just pushed the fence up and we now have it chained so um i wish her and buttercup would get along better they still kind of fuss and fight through that fence so we can't leave them out there by themselves without the fence up so um and i'm sure it'll change as charlotte grows and gets a little bit bigger so we'll see all the puppies are at my feet <laughs> so, um okay let's see what else uh rj's got an outside horse he's working and that's going good everything is pinned pretty much off of the um pasture because we're doing hay so um that's where the work Come in. Uh, let's see I'm trying to think and without RJ here it's kind of boring and I know that I'm sorry um, let's see what else we'll just move right on into um, oh wait in the barn stalls we have put the kittens up for adoption so um, if anybody's needing barn cats in this area come get them <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they've been staying out in the barn. There are absolutely no mice. We're having to feed them. It is what it is, so it's time for them to move on. Little Gray, another cat that had been abandoned here, and we found him under our house whenever we got back from vacation one year. He's been bringing mice up and feeding them. It's so cute to watch because he's a fixed male cat, and he's not a huge cat. But he brings up mice and puts it in the tall grass for them to hunt. But he doesn't let it get away. It's too funny. Um, 
he'll actually, if it gets too far away from him and isn't squeaking, he'll go out there and jump on it and bring it back to him. So he's kind of a kitten himself, I guess. And he's probably six years old now. Maybe seven years old. So, yeah. He's getting up there. He's still playing. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, oh. Mending fences. Right now we're working on just, we've had to put this and that and service the baler, service the sickle, um, pretty much service the tractor, just doing little things to get the hay done. So, uh, nothing major to fix. We do have a list of stuff that I've started that has to be done before winter. The baby sheep and goats have demolished the new hay feeder that I put attached to the barn, so I'm going to have to fix that. I put a shelf on it. I might just take that shelf down. I thought it would keep the hay from falling on the babies that sleep under it. It doesn't. It just gives them a play. I mean, it does, but they jump on it, break it, and so it doesn't work because they tear it down. So, um, let's see, what else? I think that's it. All right, uh, in the yarn farm, I've been spinning some, I've got some yak to spin, I've got some fiber that was gifted to me to spin, and some camel to spin, and I don't have a whole lot of time to spin, and so I'm like, <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, I haven't even had time to wash fleeces, which I'm going to start doing, I hope, next week. So, that's a big thing, is I hope to start washing some of those fleeces and get them out of here. Um, and get some spun. Uh, let's see. I, other than having visitors, that's about it. Um, for in the yarn farm. <laughs> in the fields, um, the garden has once again gone by the wayside because I haven't been able to get down there. Um, just too much going on. I do have boards down there. I know we've actually had one pumpkin, a voluntary pumpkin on the side of the house come up and the goats ate it. Just saying. Maybe they were wormy. I don't know. But they ate it. <laughs> so, it's gone. Uh, let's see. We do have, uh, the pig has her pumpkin out there. There's some coming in, so we're hoping that she'll harvest some for the fair this year. Um, I think that's about it. it. What we get, we get strawberries have come and gone. The rabbits got more of those than we did, but we did get some, so that's a good thing. Um, the butterfly garden's looking great. Everything right now just needs to be weeded and overgrown, and the weed eater quit me the other day. I'm not sure why. So it may need a new spark plug or something, but I'll change that and see. Uh, let's see, what else? I think that's it. Um, I've just been working and getting stuff. RJ is in full swing. All right, so let's just go on into the farmhouse because honestly, I don't know what else is going on out here other than everyday summer stuff. Our summers get I know people are like, ooh, summertime, it's outside. Summertime turns into our haying season and our rodeo season. So the stuff on the farm is tended to, taken care of very well. Um, but we don't get out. Spring and fall are our get things done and lots of stuff going on kind of thing. Um, but I'm trying to think, and really, I've been doing a little bit of spinning, trying to get that camel done so I can move on to some other things. but. I don't want to stop and switch bobbins and all that. Um, so I've been doing that when I have a chance in the evenings. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else we've got going on. RJ has got one more month of heavy rodeo. He's trying to make the finals. He's hanging in there right just like last year. They take, I can't remember if it's the top 10 or the top 15, and he is teetering between the three bottom holes and we were talking and him and I and um, a couple other rodeo guys were talking last year there was a couple of guys that just really had a huge head lead, head start didn't have to push through August to stay qualified um, because they had such a even if one person even if the second place person had won all those other rodeos they wouldn't have made enough money to catch them so they knew they were guaranteed a spot at the finals this year, everybody is volleying, and they're all within one win of each other. 
um, and that can be anywhere from two to five hundred dollars. So the second place guy is within one win of the first place guy. Um, RJ, I think last week he was just the bottom hole, and this week he won two checks, so he moved up to the third hole. And I think they're moving him back down because this weekend he's been working. He's got one more to go to at Winfield on Monday. Um, he did win a check, but it wasn't enough to bump him up. I think it dropped him because the other guy went. It just depends on who's winning, and nobody is like this big leaps and bounds qualified. There's not a big break in the uh, um, money count, and that's why how you qualify. You have to win, and it goes by dollar amount that you win. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. He might make the ACRA finals yet. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, with him doing that, we put up over, I think it was like, I'm trying to give you an exact count, but I think we put up 686 bales of hay so far. Um, I've got a guy coming to pick up 100 today, and then we've got to put the rest of it in the barn, and we're not halfway done. Um, we've got, still have the back half of our pasture to do, so, um, we should have enough hay put up. This year we have decided that since I have an extra job that I'm going to purchase 10 round bales to have for the cattle and the horses. So that will not leave us so tight. The last two years packing these barns, um, depending on how many babies everything has and trying to plan for things that are coming in. I got my Highlander, I got the, the big steer this year. Um, trying to plan for all those things has run us really close and we have a good friend and he um buys hay from us every year he doesn't buy it okay he barters with us um eddie and rj rj does eddie's chores eddie does round bales if i need one he, we call um and i'll pay him with square hay but anyway he had extra of my hay up in a barn that we had paid him with so i borrowed it back and this when we get this in, I think I've got 50 bales I've got to take back up to him so that we're even. Then, um, he is going to provide me with 10 big round bales, and I probably will just pay him for his time and hay on that. Um, I'm not going to put up enough square bales to do 10 round bales I, after that. I, I just don't know. So, um, yeah. But it has been leaving us a little short and a little tight at the end of the year, so... Yeah, and when things get tight on the farm, things get tight everywhere. So, um, just for us anyway. But we're doing that. The hay in season, I've got bales of hay out in the pasture right now. I'm not going to bale anymore today. I've got guests coming and that guy coming to pick up, and I can't. I physically can go out there and bale it, but there's not enough of me to go around, and our and Lee are both at um, working that roping. So. It is what it is. Uh, let's see, what else is going on? Um, on a personal note, I'm hoping if everything works out, I'm going to get rid of my gray. Um, yeah, I've got a girlfriend and her daughter wants to play with my hair. So we went and we picked out a color. She's going to dye it and style it. I'll have to take a picture and put it on Facebook. I normally don't do this kind of stuff. So this is weird but I think it'll be fun so we'll see what I look like when she gets done who knows uh, she's a very girly girl and I'm not <laughs> so yeah um, okay work on the tiny house I know a lot of people have asked so I ordered the trusses and they messed them up and I hadn't gotten them hadn't gotten them and then the order I guess got lost anyway I took it as a sign from God to just stop and think about it in the meantime, um, I had gone back to the dentist, and I have a tooth that is kind of yucky. Um, I guess it needs a root canal. It doesn't hurt me, and it doesn't, you know, I mean, it's not a big deal. But according to the x-rays, I need to have it fixed. So, um, I'm putting the tiny house on hold and going to get my dental work done. And that way, I can keep eating. <laughs> I'm just saying, I keep eating. So, um, yeah, 
we will get to it. It might be a month or so. It just depends. Um, I'm going to see. The trusses are the holdup. When I get the trusses, I literally have two by fours to put up and the tent, and that's it. So I don't trust myself enough to build a roof because you have to get those angles right. And I can't get the top peak angles perfect for six trusses, I think. Six or, six or seven trusses. I think six. Um, because we're putting every four foot. So it's 20 by 20. If you do that, you've got the front one and then every four foot thereafter. So I think it's, yeah, it's six. But no, it's five. If they're every four foot, I don't know. I have it written down someplace, but it is what it is. And it's going to have to go on hold for a little bit because, as we all know, you need to take care of yourself sometimes. And dental work is not something that you can just put off. So I'm going to stop and have uh, dental work done. And then we'll get back to the garden when it gets time. All right. I think really that is all I have. I'm cleaning up the house today just because we eat and the dishes sit there and I don't have a dishwasher so other than these right here. Um, so I did dishes, I'm doing some laundry, stuff like that, but nothing major going on on the farm. So uh, I will be calculating the due dates on everything and I will go back and look and see when we're expecting our little lambs and our uh, at the max it's going to be four lambs if both of them are bred and they both throw twins it'll be lambs it'll be four four lambs but normally the morenos only throw singles that's all that we've really gotten out of them every once in a while they'll throw a twin but we consider that a bonus so we're looking at maybe one or two more lambs um we'll see how it does we've not done winter lambs so, um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I, I'm, I'm nervous because we have to get them through the winter. And our winters aren't that bad. And I'm thinking if they're born in September, which I've got to go back and look. I'm praying that they're born by the end of September because that gives them about three months. September, October, November, December, we start getting a little bit colder, a little bit um more, you know, and then by January, February, they should be five months old, and they should be able to handle the really bad cold, and we'll have our uh, other ones start breeding in December, so they'll all start now, because Fudgy and them will breed in September, <gasps> so we're going to be having babies and breeding season at the same time, oh, what was I thinking? Oh. Okay, so, on top of that, we also have the three moms, uh, Bidet, Longhorn, and Miss Zebu are due. Um, I will look and see when they are and have those dates someplace, either in a blog post or next week's video, so that you can find out when. Now, remember, we're doing gemstones, so we still need a, at least five names. Yeah. So... Mm -hmm. And, okay, I'm going to spoil this because I am tickled at what we come up with for next year um, for the naming. And it's not, it's not going to be themed. It's, it is, but it isn't. Um, so I'm tickled. I'll wait till RJ's here so that we both can tell you what we've come up with for next year's. Because the problem is we're running out of names, okay? Um, every time we pick something, we think that it's a big array. And then we get into this rut and people use just the most common ones and that's all they'll say. And I end up scouring the internet or somebody will finally come up with something that's different. And it's like, whoa, here we go. Um, so at the end, it gets kind of hectic naming. I mean, we got to a point where some people weren't shouting out any names for the babies anymore so that's an that's a real bad issue but this next year we're going to give it a rest of using our brains and thinking and 
we're going to do something amazing. So, um, yeah, I'm tickled. I'm tickled, tickled, tickled. I'm tickled at the way the whole idea came about. Um, and I'm tickled that we get to do it this way. So, um, yeah, but that's for another vlog. <laughs> Make you keep watching. I will talk to you guys later and I'm gonna get back to work. Bye.